Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. This is John Chance, and my guest today is Jeremy Kennerson. His journey in internet marketing began in 2009 when he assumed leadership of the sales team at Infusionsoft, better now known now as Keep. In 2013, he founded his own digital agency specializing in the complete customer lifecycle. And over the last decade, he has mastered the art of outsourcing, investing over one million in overseas teams, making him a true authority in remote team delegation. He has revolutionized outsourcing with his insourcing methodology as the founder of Desk Team 3 and as a longtime partner of Duct Tape Marketing and the Duct Tape Marketing Agency Network. So Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Let's start with that first term. You know, how do you define insourcing. Uh, it's a term you, I think, are spending some time trying to give some space around. So in a nutshell, what is insourcing? Yeah, as quickly as possible. So outsourcing is your, you know, sourcing folks that are outside of your office. You know, they could be right. in the United States, they could be overseas, you know, whatever you're outsourcing. And insourcing is where we kind of bring everybody overseas into an actual office. And we found that, well, we found when I ran my own digital agency and I was outsourcing, I came across all the same excuses and frustrations everybody else has dealt with, you know, like yeah, it yeah. didn't get done because of this, that, and the other thing. And I eliminated all of that by bringing everybody into an office. You know, we control all the internet providers, the electricity, the computers, and having managers. So bringing everybody in house. Yeah. So kind of one, one, one like direct cable <laughs> to, to, to the insourced office. So, you set out, I think, and I don't know if this was the original plan, but right now what you're trying to do with Desk Team 360 is to to change the industry a little bit. What kind of issues have you encountered, you know, in trying to get to where you are today? I think the biggest thing, just going back to the beginning, like it was funny. I, 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 met, some, I met somebody that was at Infusionsoft years ago. His name was Brett. And he said, hey, how's it going? I was like, oh, great. You know, he's like, what have you been up to since you left Infusionsoft? And I started telling him all these things. And he's like, ah, you had the entrepreneurial convulsion. Yeah. I'm like, what's that? He's like, you just went after every single idea you possibly could that you thought would make you money. And so that was the first hurdle to overcome was actually right. like closing down all these smaller businesses that were making, you know, a little bit amounts of money here and there. So being able to focus, I think, was the first hurdle yeah. we overcame. Yeah, I'd say well, that a lot of <laughs> listeners probably share that that part of their journey if they hopefully they figured it out. You know, I, you know, our model in, in the agency world is really a lot of outsourcing or a lot, a lot of delegation of work rather than the business or certainly the owner of the business doing uh, the actual work of fulfillment. But a heck of a lot of people I talk to have said, yeah, I, you know, I've tried to do this and put this thing together and that thing together. And it's just, it's more work than it's worth. I mean, what do you say to folks that, that kind of talk about outsourcing is just not being able to do it? Yeah, I find a lot of people deal with that same issue and it comes down to outsourcing and not just outsourcing, I'd say delegation. Yeah. It doesn't matter where they are. If you're delegating something, that's a skill set that you need, not just in business, but as a parent, you know, in life, <laughs> right. like I need to delegate these things. And a lot of times people jump into it, like they jump into a lot of things that it's just going to be sunshine and rainbows. It's going to be super easy. I need to get this thing off my plate. So I have right. more time to do this. Yeah. And we get so impatient as entrepreneurs that we look at those things and go, oh, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't, it didn't work out. Like something happened when in reality, if we take the time to actually learn this skill set, it'll save us so much time in the long run. But you have that awkward phase when you hire anybody, whether it's yeah. hiring yeah. an in-house employee, right. they're in an awkward phase of one to two months before they're able to like actually take time off your plate because before then they're coming to you asking you all these questions and everything. And the same thing with outsourcing overseas. It's not something that's just going to happen right away. You have to learn how to communicate and work with people outside of the office. And that's, yeah. the key. that's what I teach my clients when they first come on board. If I had a whiteboard here, we could draw this little graph, you know, that, that would show, because I do think a lot of people think that it was like, Oh yeah, I'm hiring this people. Like that's off my plate now. And it's really actually more on your plate than it ever was <laughs> because yeah. now you have to actually document it and get what's in your head out of your head. So somebody else can do it. So I think people underestimate that there's kind of a period of more work as opposed to like, you know, fantasy land, isn't there? 
Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Fantasy land. <laughs> that's what it is. It's a fantasy to think that you could just hire a person, give them all these things, like as if they've worked with you for the last five years right. and know what's in your head and know how you like things done. It's just not realistic. So whether you're doing it in-house or outsourcing, it's the same thing. You just got to take the time. And I like what you said is like getting the ideas out of your head and creating an actual SOP so that right. next time you hire someone, it doesn't become a pain in the rear. You know, Absolutely. you're able to use that to help, you know, the onboarding process a lot faster. Yeah. And I'm sure you have a lot to say about this as well, but you know, I've certainly found one of the pitfalls is kind of lack of communication that, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I need a, I'll use one of the things you do, but, you know, for a lot of your clients, I need a website and think, okay, that's going to get a website built. <laughs> right? Right, right. And so, you know, we've found actually you can't over communicate enough. I mean, in several formats, you know, and especially if you know what you want, you know, getting that, you know, communicated takes some time, doesn't it? Oh, it does. And, you know, that's what I spend a lot of my time working with my clients, training them how to communicate the requests. <laughs> Website's a little bit bigger. That definitely isn't something that you just, you know, send to an email and say, hey, I want a website and then it's done. <laughs> so what I always tell our clients is schedule a call with your account manager. When you have a bigger project, like yeah. a website project, like let the U.S.-based account manager know the 30,000 foot view of the project so they can help quarterback that project as it's getting done. I think that really helps a, a lot with those type of bigger projects, having that U.S. based account manager to talk to and outline the project. So so we've been, we've mentioned Desk Team 360 a number of times, probably a good point in the show to say what Desk Team 360 is and does. I mean, I think people have probably figured out you provide some outsourced services, but let's kind of give an overview. Sure. Yeah. O over the years, I kind of called it outsourced marketing implementation. So we work a lot with, you know, your clients and, and different agencies, a lot of different entrepreneurs, but really no matter what business you're running, whether you're doing marketing for another company as a consultant or an agency or an entrepreneur doing your own marketing, there's a lot of things that take place. First is the strategy and you got to know what your strategy is. And then you need to be able to write that content for that strategy. So if you got a you know, marketing funnel, well, you need the sales copy, the sales page copy, you need the thank you page copy, you need the email copy, right? Right. If you handle the strategy and the email and all the content writing, our clients will send us over projects and then we get all the graphic design, all this, the tech set up. So creating the landing pages and click funnels, connecting it to your website, connecting it to the emails, your CRM and using Zapier and getting everything integrated and tested and working. We handle all of the graphic design and all the tech work. So, and I think that's a great point to go a little deeper in because I think a lot of times people underestimate. They, they we use the example of a of a web page or a landing page or a website that you know to actually make that function as a marketing tool. There's probably some other integrations that have to happen into your CRM, you know, so that you can create you know follow up sequences. So, over and above design, you're actually kind of hooking all those parts together for people too, aren't you? Correct. Yeah. All, all the finer details. I say if there's a software that you use for your marketing, then give us the login and we can get it working yeah. for you. So you're, I'm sure there are other people that do this, but you have a particular financial model as well, a subscription based model. You want to uh, kind of up as well? Yeah, sure. So now we have uh, three different packages. One is like an unlimited graphic design. Yeah. The next one is just the tech. So just handling like the logins and the emails, the websites and all, all that stuff. And then there's the pro, which is the combination of both. You got unlimited graphic design and unlimited tech help yeah. all for one low monthly fee of $9.97 a month. Well, I'll, I'll tell you selfishly, you know, we, we promote this. We use Desk Team 360 before our clients. We promote it to all the consultants in our network to use for their clients as well, because, you know, having that fixed or at least an idea of that fixed cost, you know, a lot of times one off things come up or, you know, you need to redesign something here. And so you, you really kind of you, you really can predict your costs <laughs> that you're going to have. And I know that's one of the things we really uh, love. I'll tell you the other thing for agencies. Even if you don't have, you know, we have a lot of folks that are getting started, maybe they have two or three clients, you know, a, a subscription feels scary to them. They're not working on their own websites. And right. So actually having somebody there, you know, to be able to go, oh, let's get these four pages done that we've been talking about for six months. You know, that I tell you that I tell people that and they're like, oh, yeah, I guess I could use it for that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people will have their own website as like a low priority task that when no they're priority. not submitting yeah. stuff to us, we're able to get to work on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's great. 
Talk about some of the results that you've seen or maybe some of your favorite projects or, you know, anything that you've worked with somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, people are just saving tons of time. You know, yeah. some people are saving, you know, 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week, 40 hours a week, just a, a ton. One of our clients is an agency and he's been with us for about four years and he started off just like you guys did. It was like, oh, let me test you guys out with one. Okay, cool. Right. You guys work great. This is awesome. I love working with you. Let's up it to three. And then he just kept increasing and growing his agency to where now he's up to about 20 tasks at a time. So he actually has like his own dedicated teams with us now. And it's just really cool to see someone go from like just starting off with their agency and being able to grow. Because when I did my agency, like I don't do my agency anymore. Why? Because yeah. yeah. it evolved. But if I knew then what I know now, I, I probably would still have my agency uh, because I started off hiring all in-house people, you yeah. know, and it's just super right. extensive. You, you know, you're, I got to the point where as we were making more money, I, as the business owner was making less money and <laughs> that's not a good business model to no, be in. No, so no. And I so it helps a lot. Sorry to chuckle, but I've heard that exact statement before. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. let's talk a little bit about the business itself. How, what has been your best method of say generating leads and new business for uh, your own organization? Yeah. So this is something where a few years ago I went to an event and you know, when you go to an event, you hear the same thing over and over again, but every once in a while you hear something and you're like, I knew that. Why didn't I do that? I wasn't doing it. <laughs> and it was just talking about joint venture partnerships. So yeah. I, especially with dealing with agencies, there's people like right now, we, I have a, a relationship with someone in the esthetician business. So she's well known. She has a huge following and she is now using us and has used us and now is referring us. And now she's promoting Destine 360 to her list. But same thing with agencies, like you can connect with somebody that has a big influence in a particular niche. And I hear a lot of people, they're scared to niche down because they feel like they are committed to that for the rest of their life. Like they can't take on any other clients unless they're in that niche. And I tell people, right. no, no, you can still service other people, but your marketing campaign is geared towards that one niche but then get another niche and then get yeah. another niche. Yeah. And if you can continue to build relationships, like that has helped desk team faster, like, like grow faster than anything else. Besides that, you know, we've, as Facebook ads have become more expensive, we went into the realm of like cold outreach, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm still doing a lot of the traditional stuff, but just playing with as many things as possible. Yeah. But that joint venture partnership really got the needle moving the most. You know, I get asked this question all the time. Somebody's either just getting started or they're really, you know, want, they want that one thing. Like, what's one thing I could do that would really make a difference? I always point them to that. You know, strategic partners are really a, a great way to go. I mean, you know, they may have 500, you know, prospects they could introduce you to, you know, where, you know, a, a client might have two or three, you know, referrals they could give you. So it's yeah. really the best bang for your buck. Sometimes it takes a while to get going. You know, it's not an overnight thing, but yeah. Great bang for your buck. So we have gone, let me uh, look, 13 minutes and 58 seconds. I'm going to mention AI for the first time. <laughs> How is AI impacting the design business as you see it? I know there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of you know misinformation about you know the ways people are using, but certainly it's here at a point. And then maybe it's a follow-up question to that is where do you think it's going? Yeah. So right now with design, I have not had a lot of luck getting the heat the AI to create a good design. I've tasked my team to play with it and just not a lot of good results. It's similar to chat GPT. Like when that first came out, everybody was like, not just say everybody, but a lot of people were like, oh, this is garbage, you know? And it's yeah. like, yeah, well, you know, if you put in one question and you get back your answer, but how about you drill that question down five different times, you know, or yeah. 10 different times and you can get some good, pretty good content that way but I just have not been able to nail it down with the actual design functionality because it just gives a lot of weird images. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so moving away from like Dolly and things that are creating images, I'm seeing some services cropping up that are, you know, you put in the, your business where it's located, the industry, and you push a button and it's going to pull in stock photos and things and design a website or at least, you know, design a homepage. We can debate whether or not that that is valuable at all, but 
how are you, how are you fighting that sort of, you know, oh, it's free almost, <laughs> you know, to do this kind of stuff. I mean, how do you know what, when somebody comes to you and says, oh, it's going to be X amount a month, you know, for me to you know have web design versus, you know, getting this stuff that they say is free. You know, what do you tell somebody that, that might have that argument in their mind? You get what you pay for. I mean, I remember right. when Wix first, not Wix, what was the Weebly? Do you remember Weebly, that sure, website design? It sure. was like, oh, you could set one up for free. And then I was like, cool, I'm going to set one up for my dad. And at the time I had no experience with setting up websites, <laughs> but I set one up for my dad and it looked absolutely terrible because I'm not a designer. So like, I, I sure I could like try to get it done. Same thing with the AI and same thing with the graphics, same thing with the websites. Like you get it done and you look at it and you go, is this what I want my brand to look like, you yeah, know, and yeah. uh, there's just something to be said when you have a human being yeah. researching and looking into your business and creating designs, creating multiple designs, and then being able to do revisions and, and, and go back to get it honed into something you love compared to trying to get something for free and spending a lot of time, a lot of your time and a lot of your energy to create something you're not happy with anyway where a lot of people that try those things, by the time they come to us, they've already tried Weebly and Wix and they try to create a blog on WordPress or, but it just ends up being the same result. They're like, I just rather pay somebody at this point, but they've wasted three months in the process trying to yeah. do Yeah, I, I think certainly a lot of business owners, you know, don't give enough, I don't think give enough value to, to the impact of design, of good design, of consistent design, of design, that, that at least to the viewer represents what they think, you know, that it should feel like, right. We've all gone to right. a website, you know, of an, an industry that, you know, or something and it was a templated thing. And you're, is that really what I want? You know, or I expect a construction site to look like, you know, probably not. And so I think that's, you know, the, obviously the value of having at least one team, you know, work on your things. You really get that consistency or at least have the ability do you ever find, you know, I kind of already talked about this idea of over communicating, you know, we're pretty opinionated <laughs> about what we think a, a website should do and function and not as much about what it should look like, but certainly what should be there, what the journey should look like. Do mm -hmm. you ever feel like you, you know, people like me would run the risk of like Kating to the point where you're just trying to give me what I want as opposed to, hey, here's actually a creative design that we think would serve you better. Yeah, I think that like, there's no way you can over communicate. There, yeah. There's just no way. I and mean, the, the team's not gonna get annoyed by it. Like I hear that a lot from people. They're like, hey, I don't mean to bug you, but can you please it's like, if you are not bugging us, please. The more information, the better. Like, And because we don't like, like there's no, with us, there's no consequence of doing unlimited revisions. Yeah. So like, yeah. Give your feedback, refine it until it's something that you fall in love with. And uh, for you guys, it's a little bit different because you're creating the websites for your clients. So instead of being yeah. in love with it, you look at it and go, is this good yeah. enough for to come from us to our yeah. client? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great point. I always, I love to ask entrepreneurs this. What's like on the horizon for you? Are you any new areas or you just really kind of want to keep oaring this boat, you know, to, <laughs> in the straight direction? Yeah. So for the immediate future, yes, we're directing it. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible and in, in what our offerings are down the pipe in the future, in the near future, because I already have this in beta is um, offering like a legit US based project manager, because some of our clients that are a little bit larger, like you guys, you guys have your own in-house people that are managing all your tickets and everything. But there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are managing a lot of tickets. Yeah. They just don't have the, they don't have the infrastructure to go, Hey, you know, Billy, this is on your plate. Now you take yeah. care of this forever. So being able to offer that account man or that project manager role where you can meet with somebody like weekly or even daily to like go through what it is that you need done, what your tasks are and have them organize it and have them communicate with the team. I think it would be pretty, pretty big for some of our larger clients where they don't have to, cause that's a, that's another position, another hat yeah, that they have yeah. to wear is managing all the tickets and everything. So that's more in the immediate future. And then I'm also looking at adding on uh, different services in regards to marketing. And also, uh, why did I just forgot that? I swear, John, ever since I hit 40, like, <laughs> like things just pop right out of my brain and I'm like, where'd it go? It was right there. Some other services in regards to like uh, actual marketing. So, you know, being able to do more things with SEO, doing more mm -hmm. things with social media, doing more things with cold outreach and having that as like, Part of an offering, especially as we are entering into these different niches, 
than being able to set up yeah. like for estheticians, like local SEO, like, great, we can systematize that, template that and push that out to all those clients. Cause we have different clients like you that are niched into something. So being able to systematize that and, you know, even white label the services so mm -hmm. that our clients can make money off of our services at the same time has been pretty helpful. Awesome. Well, Jeremy, I appreciate you taking a moment to stop by the duct tape marketing podcast. You want to invite people to, to obviously connect with you, but then I'll uh, find out more about Desk Team 360 and the various ways you might be able to help them. But yeah, if you go to w360.info, that'll actually take you to a duct tape marketing page of ours where you can get a 10% discount. And you can check out all of our case studies and see how everybody's using it and how and why they love it. Awesome. Well, again, I appreciate you stopping by and hopefully we'll run into you out there on the road. In fact, I know I'm going to run into you out there on the road pretty soon in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you next month. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, John. Take care.